Hello and welcome, this is The Network Work speaking, hope you're doing well. In this video, we will be covering recursive routing on a MarketTick device. So this is a pretty cool way that we can set up scenarios with automated failover, where our next hop um, might still be up, but the internet is actually down. And recursive routing will allow us a means of making the failover work in the event of a network failure. So let's get into the video and discuss recursive routing. Alright, so in the previous lecture, we discussed a little bit about how you can implement a very basic failover setup where you could have two different gateways and you might just set the distance higher for a secondary gateway so that if the primary link goes down, it, it can just fail over to the secondary gateway. Now that works perfectly on triple PoE connections or links that are perhaps spanned across to a data center. But what if the device is directly connected to your MicroTik. Let's say ISP1 and ISP2, they actually put down routers or different pieces of equipment directly on site with your MicroTik and the IP addressing between their device and your MicroTik lives on a little ethernet cable or fiber or something that's just between these two devices. So in that type of event, even if there is an internet failure, the link will stay up to you and your next hop. So that makes that type of failover scenario a bit difficult because the link between you and your ISP's equipment hasn't gone down, but the internet is down and the route will now just stay up because you're still just pushing traffic to your next hop because the next hop is technically still up. And that causes issues because now you actually need to manually fail over by changing the administrative distances so that you can get over to the secondary link. But what if you could fix that? What if you could automate that or make it automatic so that if there is some type of failure with this directly connected piece of equipment um, to get to the internet, how can we make that work? Well, we could use something called recursive routing. So recursive routing allows you to specify a gateway that's not necessarily connected directly to your device. Now, in our type of topology, what we're going to do is we're kind of going to trick the MicroTik to use DNS servers. It, it doesn't have to be a DNS server, but something that is publicly accessible that we know that might always be responding. We're going to be using those servers as a means of determining if the internet is up and failing over traffic because in essence you'll see when we implement the recursive routes we're going to use 8888 and 1111 as our default gateways but with the recursive routing our router will then be smart enough to understand hey to actually get to 8888 we need to recursively route through a specific interface now it's nice when you set up recursive based routes because if the recursive routing fails, that gateway goes down, then all of the other routes in the table will also just automatically turn blue or will no longer be valid. And it will then just follow your secondary path that you've set up. And we're going to do this super simply, super easy on equipment. Uh, we're going to also play around with that router six that we've got on an Eve topology. But before we actually get onto the configuration, I just want to talk about the scopes and target scopes as well, because they do play a big role when it comes to recursive routing. All right, so here we're on the routing page of the MicroTik Wiki, and this actually does a pretty good job of explaining how NextHop Lookup works. So I will link this again in the description or in the comment section so that you guys can have a look at it. But I want you to focus specifically on the scopes. Now, scopes will play a big role in determining if you can set up something like a recursive route because you need to kind of, I don't want to say trick the router, but you will basically be adjusting some of the scopes to tell the router or make it think that a uh, route is directly connected instead where it is actually a static route. Now we can then use that directly connected route to actually forward traffic out through an interface then and then use it for recursive lookup. So that's just the gist of kind of what we want to do with recursive lookup. Um, I've also got this let's say this diagram here from the marketing site open. So let's just also maximize that quickly because I want you to understand that scope and target scope is kind of like a formula that is also used within the rib to figure out which routes will be preferred and which will be ultimately shown in your FIB, your forwarding information base. Now all connected routes have a scope of 10 
and then all the other routes have their own type of scope that they use now what we are going to do in essence is we're going to take a route that we're going to send out to the internet to a next hop but we're going to change the scope of that route so that it looks like it's a connected route and then the router can then also use that routing information to actually get to a remote site it will make a lot more sense when we actually configure it on a market tick, which we'll do right now so let's pick on router six again because we are back in the eve topology and we need to set up some automated failover using recursive routing so i'm just going to log on to winbox quickly and let's navigate to <clears throat> I'll connect on Ramon and let's get on to router six. And now on router six, let's just zoom in here. We'll have a look at the routing table. All right, so we're in the routing table and we can see there are two default routes out to get to the internet. However, we do have that situation where both of these routes are directly connected. So even if let's say that there is a failure down the line somewhere, it won't auto recover because it won't pick up that the link has actually gone down. An example will be if I quickly just uh, log on to router one. So let's just get onto that router one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the internet. <laughs> so I'm just going to disable the IP address between router two and router one. And if we look at the Eve topology, basically this link between router two and one is down now. But router 6 will still send the traffic to router 2 because it picks up that it's still up. So if I go into router 2 and we just log on to the terminal and we do a ping 8888, we can see it's timing out because it's still sending the packets to router 2. But it's not failing over automatically because it still sees that first route as being valid. So this is kind of the issue with the previous video with the failover that I've made. But we can fix this with recursive routing. We can still have automatic failover where the router is smart enough to figure out which way to send the traffic. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove these two default routes. And I'm going to turn the IP address back on, on router 1. And then navigate back to router 6. And let's set up some recursive routing. So what we're going to do is the first thing, I'm just going to add a route. And then we first want to add routes or things that we want to check. So we want to verify that these hosts are basically up. And we're these are basically, think of these as the IPs that you're going to route out the normal way. And then you're going to tell the router how to get to those routes so that you can actually verify that it's up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add two DNS servers that I know is practically always up, which is 8888. And then for 8888, I'm going to use the gateway as 10.0.0.9, which is the address between router 2 and router 6. So let's just add that. And let's just verify that I can actually ping 8.8.8.8. Okay, I can ping that. I saw in my last ping it came up. Now let's add another route, or 1.1.1.1, which is the Cloudflare DNS. And for this, I'm going to send it out over the path of 10, 1, 0 0.13, which is the link between router 6 and router 3. Now, let me apply this. Now, cool, I've got two routes that will basically be forming, performing checks to make sure that I can get to those DNS servers because each of the DNS servers I'm sending over a different path. And then what I could do is I could add default routes and then instead of making the gateway the IP address that I had for Ether1 or Ether2, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to add the gateway as 8.8.8.8. .8 and I'll apply this. And we'll see it shows unreachable. And the reason it says unreachable is because it's not being routed recursively yet. Because the router still thinks that it can only get to 8.8.8.8 and if I want to now recursively route, I kind of need to trick the router by adjusting some of the scopes. So what I'll do is I'll go into this route for 8888, and then the scope, if you remember that diagram, and again, I will put a link in the description or the comments so that you can look at it. I'm just going to tell the router that the 8888 route also has a scope of 10, and then that will make it think that it's a directly connected route. 
So if I apply this now, and I go back to the routing table, you'll actually see that it says 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0 is reachable via 888 recursively. So it's a recursive route, and it actually knows that it needs to use 10, 0, 0, 9 as its gateway. So it will still send the traffic then to 10, 0, 0, 9, but it's trying to act actually get to 8888 so it's using 8888 as a gateway but it's actually going out via our actual interface now let's do the same add a second route and this gateway will now be 1111 and the distance for this i'll just make two so it is a failover route i'll apply this and again, it's unreachable, but it's because of the scope that I haven't set yet. So let's also trick the router with the scope for 1111. And this scope, I'll also just make 10, so it thinks it's directly connected. Go back to my routing table. And then we should actually see that it becomes a recursive route. So let me just see why it's not uh, picking that up yet. All right. That was more or less just a visual bug. So all I did was disable the primary route. And then it shows that the secondary route is actually recursively used. It, it just wasn't actively trying to push traffic out of that interface. So that's why it was just kind of hanging there. So now we've set up recursive routes. But we still don't have the automated failover because we still want to actually set up a mechanism to let the router know that the gateway is down so that if it picks up that the gateway is down then it can disable that route it can make it invalid so to make that work we can just use the check gateway option set it for ping and i'll do that for both of the primary and secondary routes and now in essence what will happen is let me go back to the topology router 6 will now actually send out pings to 8888 and 1111 and then if it picks up that either of those gateways get down because the ping goes down, then it will mark that route as not usable. And then the secondary route can take over. So let me show this to you in a live demonstration. So I'll just log on to this little Docker machine. And then what we'll do is we'll just run a continuous ping from this device to somewhere on the internet. Let's make it maybe 8844. All right, so we've got a ping running continuously. We can see it is responding. Now, let's make the magic happen. So I'm gonna go back onto router one and I'll again disable this IP address for the link between router two and one. So that it emulates that the internet drops somewhere in the cloud. We'll go back to our Docker and we can see the ping is Stopped. It stopped working, but with good reason, because the route is technically still valid. Because remember, in the previous video, I mentioned that the check gateway will perform two ICMP pings. And then if it picks up the two of the packets drop within those 20 seconds, then it will mark that the host is unreachable. And you could see that it now has actually marked the primary route as blue because the gateway is no longer reachable and it's switched over to the secondary route. So let's just go back to our host and see what it's doing. Uh, let's just cancel the ping and run another ping. And there we can see the ping is still working, even though technically an internet failure has occurred on our network, because we know that the link in our ISP environment has gone down, but we can still actually get out to the internet. So let's just bring that back up so I'll go back onto my router one, just re-enable the IP. And it will just send one ICMP, it will see it's back up, and then it will start routing traffic over the primary link again. So there you can see it automatically failed over between two links using recursive routing. And all we did was add some recursive routes, change the scoping, and we essentially added static routes for what we wanted to use as our gateways and what we wanted to ping. It doesn't have to be these DNA servers. It can be something publicly accessible. It could be something across the network that you have control over that you want the device to use to check the gateway. But this is a great way to just set up some very basic but also automatic failover, even if you're using devices that are directly connected to your marketing. All right, so I'll end off the video here. I hope it's been informative and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.